Martini's Chorus Goodness. TC Electronic have brought back their stereo chorus pitch modulator and flanger. Of course, TC Electronic these days are owned by Music Tribe, Behringer, and they brought this in at a very, very attractive price, especially considering what the original ones went for and what they still go for these days. But they made a couple of little updates and likes to the circuit. Primarily, this thing doesn't need a mains power supply anymore. Yay! It's running on good old-fashioned 9 volts, so you can run it on any pedal board and all that kind of stuff. I want to see what it's like inside. What corners have they cut to get it to this price point? So, let's open it up. Standard quick start guide. Yep, anything interesting. All that super thin book, all right? That many languages. So there can't really be a huge amount of information in there. Standard stuff. You know, so your three mode switch, chorus, pitch modulation, and flanger. Flanger, flanger. Overload, input gain. So of course you can set it based on whatever, you know, pickup you're using or whatever, you know, point it is in the loop. All your stuff there, which is pretty cool. A bit of an explanation as to what's there in English and Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, so I can't do anything about that. Stickers, always like a good sticker. Let's take a look inside of this little pouchy pouch. Come on. Shloop. There we go. Come on. First thing is, I really like the new color scheme. That gold is nice, it looks good. Straight off the bat, I can see where some of that sort of, you know, price cut has gone into to get them at this price point. So for example, if we look up here on the corner of the case there, you know, imperfections in the finish and the likes. It's not looking too bad otherwise. Sides looking okay, jacks looking fine. Up there's okay. Serial number, all the details, all the stuff you'd expect. Little rubber feet. Oh, and we've got ourselves some Torx screws there. So I don't want your average person getting inside of there. But it's okay. I'm not the average person. I like how they've kept the plastic tip design similar to what the original ones were way back in the day. Can you let the tip come off? Is it twisty type? Nope, it's on there. Yep, there's some half decent feeling knobs. I actually like how they've got the thinner profile on there. Makes it a bit easier to sort of twist them around without knocking the next one over. And of course, your little mini pot there for your input gain. Yeah, spring loaded switch on that one there. So, let's get inside of this thing. Let's break it open. Let's be naughty. Let's do it. Go. Yeah, I'll go that way. So, let us crack it open and take a look inside. Up there, gotta grab me magnetic bowl. Wrong screwdriver. Open up. So it says on the back here, this takes 150 milliamp. I you know, probably would believe that. Come on. I said, come on. There we go. And final screw. Arr. All right, awesome. Now the moment of truth. Oh, I'm being greeted by the underside of it. Is that, is that a post after the fact? Little bodge on there. Quite possibly throwing that on after it. Yeah, a bit of a goopy ball of solder there. That's not too happy. Yeah, yeah. So it's all mounted on one board there. Pretty well what you'd expect though. Yeah. There, that size, that size. Do, 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 do. That one there, that one there. 
So judging by the lack of through hole on this, this is going to be SMD, which at this price point is what you'd expect. SMD is not a bad thing. I mean, it's bringing equipment to people at prices they've never had before. So they can get more stuff. And if you're half confident what you're doing and you know your way around a hot air rework gun and all the rest of that, you can typically repair most of the SMD stuff in these. It's not like we're talking ultra minuscule, super teeny tiny parts that you know are the kind of thing you need to use a pick and place machine or some kind of highly specialized equipment to work with. That was a lot easier than I was expecting. Cool. So we've got the guts of this inside here, ready to rock and roll. So that is soldered onto the board. It's not even a quick connect. That's frustrating. <laughs> I mean, once again, you got the right, got the right tools, got the right parts. And that's not going to be too difficult to remove. Those two screws there, desolder the pins on the back here, and it'll come off. So let's actually take a look here at what we've got on the board. We're open, we're inside. Let's take a look at what's on the board, starting with the heart and soul of any good analog chorus flanger delay pedal, and that is the BBD chip, Bucket Brigade Delay. This one, of course, is going to use a Cool Audio chip. Most of the chips on here are Cool Audio because Cool Audio is a brand of Music Tribe, Behringer. So they've resurrected the MN3207 and a couple of other chips as the V3207 in this case. Pretty ubiquitous chip found in countless choruses and flanges and all of that kind of stuff out there. Um, and then this is driven by, up here, a couple of different things. So we've got a CD4011 quad NAND gate, which is going to act like a flip-flop to help drive the clock on that. So it doesn't use the MN3101 clock driver like some other pedals like the uh, Boss CE2 does. And then up there, of course, we've got CD4007 which is a CMOS dual complementary pair plus inverter. Does some interesting things in this particular circuit. Uh, LM339, I believe, up there. Yep. V571. This is a compounder. This was one of the things that made these pedals as quiet as they were back in the day. So being a compressor expander helps do some wonderful magic stuff to drop all the background noise in there whilst you've got minimal signal going through. Especially on sort of pedals like these that use the bucket brigades that do have a lot of noise behind them and all the supporting hardware around it, that really makes these an excellent pedal, at least it did back in the day. Haven't heard this one yet, we'll find out. Over here we've got a V13700 operational transconductance amplifier. Normally you find those in compressors, specifically things like the MXR Dynacomp or the Ross uh, two-knob compressor. Being used in here, a bit of a different, different implementation to what you'd sort of get in most chorus pedals, but you know, it was the heyday of the 80s. New things are being tried out. And of course, up around here, just standard jelly bean op amps, 4559s in this case here. They'll do the jobby. So there's nothing really crazy going on. It is all SMD there, uh, except for your pots, which are through hole components on a separate board, which makes it a bit easier to manufacture. You can throw this on a separate line while you do that. Then these will go through as well. You know, they're just put on the board, probably done via wave soldering. If you look on the underside, yeah, through hole components there are gonna all go through wave soldered. This is probably tacked on after the fact by hand. Someone there in the factory putting one of those on each time. Yeah, a little bit of guck and muck on the board, but you know, what can you expect for a pedal at this price point? And they've kind of cut the corners in the right places. I'd hazard a guess. Um, you know, what they've done with TC Electronic is made some really good quality, budget-friendly effects, especially since they redid all the pricing and dropped them down considerably. The only thing I have a real sort of concern about are things like 
as I mentioned before, that little ball of solder. Other than that, seems like it's pretty well laid out. And of course, that's our bypass switch there. Do -do 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 -do. So I'm not seeing any relays or anything else along these lines, so I would hazard a guess that's probably going to be using um, one of the ICs for bypass. It's probably a buffered bypass in there. I like buffered bypass if it's implemented right, works well. Mono input, stereo output. Let's see what it sounds like. That was inside the TC SEF Gold. Can you fit any more initialisms in there? Of course, available now at Dr. Gear. If you found this interesting, give it a like and subscribe to Dr. Gear for more gear-related videos. You almost think it was in our name. <laughs>